Shalom, welcome to our daily class from Rabbi Nachman and Patreon. We are holding in Torah 56, the third paragraph. And we've been dealing with this idea of kingship, that every Jew has a spark of kingship. And kingship is this power to, to give over, and it's this necessity for, well, warning or leading or guiding people. And it also entails sometimes rebuke and things that are not necessarily pleasant. And each person according to his level of influence. So in, in this generation, you know, we have this concept of influencers, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, and there are people that influence us. I think it's measured by how many people you reach on your, on your social media. Uh, but, of course, there's all kinds of uh, reaching <laughs> on social media that we don't want to deal with. But here in Torah, here in the world of the holiness, and the, the advice and the insight of Rabbi Nachman, he's going to give us an advice that is about giving advice and leadership that is uh, real leadership. So let's listen. But we need bring length of days is the concept into the kingship. Now, what is length of days? Uh, old age? I don't think that's what it's about. Because there's a concept of the Rabbanut will bury the rabbi. Now, this is not a good thing. Everyone according to the kingship that he has. It's the one who has vision, oversight. So the, this um, oversight is, I want to try to find the right word in English. So fe is a phrase that is kind of, it's used for a, a type of prophet. Who, and it's a type of activity of prophecy where you're shown things at a, far, at a distance. Like you're standing on a mountainside and you see in the distance. But so fe is he sees things. He's not, uh, the power of interpretation is another quality that goes with that. But here it's so fay over somebody else to see how they're doing, to check their life, to check the details, and to be able to uh, help them make good choices. And each person has a spark of that in him. Each Jew, the Rebbe emphasizes, but why does he say the bring this famous verse the rabbanut <laughs> will bury the rabbi? <laughs> it's not a good thing, right? Hey, I'm glad I'm laughing. Um, but really, it's not so funny because we've seen certain great rabbis and teachers have actually uh, dug very deep holes for themselves. Nonetheless, everyone according to their level of malchut of sofei, everybody who has a kingship has responsibility to do it. There is no running away from this, of warning people what you see or don't see. Now, don't see means I, I, you know, I see a problem, but I don't know what to do with it. You can also tell somebody, you know, it seems like something's going on. And we need to get help, or we need to get insight. And each person, according to their level of their kingship, he warns them. And he warns them, he's done what he needs to do. So you see, it's not about the results of what is being given, what you say to a person, you know, don't cross that street. You know, it's Kedai to keep Shabbat, you know. Why not try eating kosher? Maybe it's a little healthier spiritually and physically, et cetera, et cetera. There's all kinds of aspects of life that, that Judaism covers that uh, can be um, improved, shall we say, in, in our practice. And the people that see more, don't do more, know more can help that. Okay, but if you have the influence, you don't have the right not to use it. But therefore, we need to learn how to use it. And what we first learn is that we have to do our part.
And what happens from the warnings that we give or the insight that we give is not the responsibility of the person who's trying to help, but rather it's of the person who receives the insight and receives the advice, what he does with it. And this goes for parenting as well as working, as well as your relationships with people around you in general. You know, if you see, if you t if your friend is feeling he's driving too fast, so you could tell him he needs to, maybe you could slow down. But if he doesn't slow down, then what can you do? Get upset? Now, some people, they have a problem. They get angry when people don't listen to them. So their, their problem is more complicated. And that those types of people that get angry should be very careful about telling other people what to do. Because if they don't get their word honored, then they get upset. And that's worse than not saying anything. So you have to have a level of detachment in this practice. And the person who has the rulership, has the influence, has that level of kingship, he saves himself from the judgment of the one who is, uh, let's say, not listening. As Yechezkel the prophet said, Sofei nataticha lebeit Yisrael, I gave vision to you, the, the house of Israel. I gave you vision. I gave you people who have vision. And if they do their job, it's our job to listen. Vata ki hod his harta rasha velosha mi rishato. And he brings another verse because um, if you have warned an evil person and he has not stopped doing whatever not good thing he's doing. He could die above his own sins, but not because he wasn't warned. The pasuk goes on, and you at least save yourself. And this is a very sensitive uh, matter. Because we don't want to see anybody die. And yet we can't force people to hear us. Drive slower. You know, stop drinking. <laughs> Whatever the thing is. So it is a very gentle process, and there has to be a, a level of faith, a level of faithfulness in each other, in the other person's insight, and faithfulness that the person cares, and then they're not just coming because they like to tell people what to do. It's not about that. That's the worst thing. But if a person does not warn and uh, sometimes rebuke people, then the punishment will come upon him because he's an influencer. So you see, if you think you want power, you better think twice and three times about it. Because power implies responsibility. And the responsibility implies if I don't, do my job, my part of it, then it's going to come back on me. But the job is to warn people in a way, you know, your your children, your your family members, whatever situation that you happen to be in, you can tell them it. You can also tell them nicely and kindly, lovingly and patiently and not um, get upset if they don't listen. Now it hurts. When you see someone dig their own grave, like the rabbi said here. And it's funny, he uses that phrase of rabbis. He doesn't say the CEO buries himself in his business. Of course, that's happened too. Or the, the, the actor buries himself in his movie. I'm sure that's happened as well. But he brings that verse here, the Rabbanut Mekabert Baleyava Al Kain Tsari clear Otlam Shikh Aruchut Yamimatoka Malchut. Therefore we need to bring a length of days 
We're back to this concept, the length of days, into the kingship. That is to say, you first have to check if you are able to be that person to give over that warning or that correction, let's call it. Rebuke is, uh, I don't know where that word came from. It's like rebuke. Well, that means you used to buke somebody. <laughs> I never heard of buking. But, uh, <laughs> so do it again. Rebuke. No. Correction is a little nicer, I think. Uh, how is it possible? We have to ask all those questions before you use your kingship. Because maybe we don't know what is going to help them. You could see somebody doing something wrong, but it doesn't mean you know what's going to help them. And then they're not even near you necessarily to be able to give over what you need to. Okay, so he tells us we need dot, knowledge, but deep knowledge, not simple information. And, and, and to know how to rebuke when it's necessary. And to come to this knowledge of how to correct. This is through the length of days. So you see the length of days is, you see my voice slowing down. Ah, it's connected to patience. And to, connected to your relationship to time itself. To have the time in your heart for somebody else when you talk to them. And this is what the, the world says. That a person has never known anything. A person can, you know, you could meet people that they, like they never got it. Whatever it is, the thing they need to get. Because essential, this is a beautiful piece here. Essential knowings from the knowing from life. Life itself is our teacher. From the length of days, having been around a little bit and paid attention a little bit. But to come to this length of days, this having lived a full life of experiential reality and knowledge. He tells us that the main way, of course, is through learning Torah. All right, because the Torah is the name of God. It's a very long name. You know, very, very long name. But it's a name that um, never ends, and it gives life. So like when you need to call somebody, you call them by their name. And when you call the life of all life, you need to call his name. See, the Jews are big, and we even call God the name that we call on. And to draw life and length of days from him. And that doesn't mean just getting old, it means also to have long days, full days, days of accomplishment, days of satisfaction and achievement and hard work. And we need to call him in his name. As if to say, Torah. And we say that the Torah is his name. So the learning of Torah itself is this calling on his name. Nimsa, we find, by learning Torah, we're calling on the length of days. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, someone asks you a question and you bury your head in a book. Although it is a good idea to check the Torah if you know where to check. If someone asks you a question about a business or, 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 or family relations or whatever it might be, then it's good to know where in the Torah to check. But it's also to check your own experiential ex sense of truth. Therefore the king, one of the things he has to warn the people about is the learning Torah. Bioter Nikol Ha'ulam. Before, more than all the world, you know, before the world too, in front of the whole world. He's influencing all seven billion somehow. 
And this is what brings the length of days into the kingship. That wouldn't it be nice if you had a king that every time you asked him a question, he said, well, let's look in the Torah. Instead of relying on his own impulsive response. Or a businessman or any leader, any influencer. Well, let's look in the Torah. Without personal interest, of course. And this is what it says about the, when the king would gra- gather the people. And, he, and the verse from the end of the Torah, Sefer Devarim, and he was with him, and he called him all the days of his life. This is the compliment that the Torah is giving. All the days of his life, he called on God. In order to lengthen your days, to lengthen the days in the aspect of this influencing. And this is the idea. He called to him every day, all the days of his life. So, you know, it's a beautiful idea. When you sit to learn, you open the book, you're actually calling on life. You're not just reading words from a page. You're calling on life. And this is the days of his life. Definitely, The days of his life, days are always an idea of measurements or, or, or midot, as they're called. When you receive this life force, you need to receive a certain amount. You don't need more life force than you need, and you don't need less. Because if you get too much and and without constricting the life force, it's it's going to actually, if you get too much life force, if you're running around too much, if you're exerting yourself too much, if you're speaking too much, whatever it is, too much, then you're you're actually going to drain your life force and you won't be able to receive from Hashem. Because Hashem gives an exact measurement, the exact amount that we need for what we need to do. And to give out more or give out less is to miss the point of being with Hashem in what we do. And he calls this ribui or the overabundant light. Ki ribui Hashem in gorem, ki ner, a famous statement that too much oil puts out the candle. I'm sure you've heard that before. Well, okay. Therefore, we need to receive the life force in a measured amount. And this is, we, we merit to get the measured amount through the Torah because the Torah itself is a book of measures. It is God's name. And the name is the vessel of the thing. It's it. You know, it, it, it's so deep, we, we, we just kind of skim over it. The name is the vessel of the thing. If your name is Yochanan, or John in English, right? Well, then Yochanan is the name that is your vessel. And it's a channel of your life force. And so on. Hashem, u nigbal achiyut eladavar hazeh. And the name is the, the limitations, the boundaries of the life force. Let's come to each person. The living soul is its name. When you call on somebody, you're not calling words in the air, you're calling on a living soul that has a label called a name. But you're really calling on the living soul of the person. And it, the name is that, therefore, of the, the, the capsule, the container of the living soul of that thing. Therefore, when you call a person by his name, so he immediately, you're, you're bringing him to you. Because 
person's name is you're actually calling his soul to you by calling the name. And how much more so when you call God? And so too, calling on the Torah is calling on the name of God. And that is going to bring Hashem closer to you. And this is what we're really after in this world of mirrors and mazes and illusions. So I think this is a good place to, to stop and pause and think and absorb. Calling on God is calling the Torah, calling His name, calling the essence. Calling the name is the boundary or the vessel of that essence. So, you know, it's a very interesting thing to do. I've done this in meditation. I've led, uh, <clears throat> we've done this in a group before. Go into a deep meditation and try to imagine not having your name. Try it. Try to just erase. I'm not Avraham. I'm just no name. I have no name. Experience that for a moment. We can see how important a name really is as a vessel of who you are. God bless you all. We'll continue this, this amazing Torah, <laughs> Torah 56, uh, hopefully tomorrow. And uh, we're getting ready for Shavuot, so God should help you call on His name to receive that complete life force of healing and redemption. And as the Rebbe says, your malchut, your kingship and proper usage. All the best.